Hey everyone, Tori the Crafty Girl here, and today we have another circular knitting machine project. We're going to be using the Addy 22. I also am using this. This is called the Addy Egg, and what this allows you to do is to quickly create I-cord. If you're not familiar, I-cord looks like this. It's so beautiful. Um, the Addy Egg is definitely temperamental, so uh, you can only use certain yarn in it, but I am using this yarn right here. I don't exactly remember the color. I know it is a four weight yarn, and I think the color is rust. I'm pretty sure I got it at Joann's. But what we're gonna make, I haven't even told you what we're making yet. So what we are making, okay, hear me out. We are gonna make little turkey feet chair socks. That's right, folks, turkey feet chair socks, because why the heck not? So for this project, again, I have never made this. This is just, I had this idea this morning and thought we would see how it goes. So the first thing that I'm imagining is I need to have, you know, three little, three little toes. Okay, so you'll have your little eye cord, three little toes like this. And then we're going to create just a little sock. Um, which measures for my chair about three and a half inches. Because it's three and a half inches, I can't just use the I cord. It would stretch too much. You would see the leg through it. It wouldn't quite have the same look I want. So we are going to be using our 22 pin, but you can use any circular knitting machine you want because we're going to be doing panel settings um, and we're only going to be using just a few of the pins here. Like I said, I need to get this to three and a half inches. And what I'm going to be doing is knitting um, some panels and then I will stitch the sides together and that will give us that tube look. Now we also have to account for the bottom because we you know, the whole point of having a chair sock is so when you slide it across the ground, it doesn't scratch your ground. Um, but also, you know, you don't want to slide everywhere. So I'll figure out that part when we get to it. Okay, I will, I will figure that out. I'll probably just end up doing a crochet decrease on the center. Um, but let's start with this. So I ended up just using the Addy 22, the Addy egg, not the Addy 22, the Addy egg to make this. This is about... Let's see how much did I made. This is about 22 inches. Um, and the great news with the I cord, you can also cut it to the length that you want. So you could just sit down, you know, watching a show or listening to a podcast or whatever, um, float your boat. Um, you could just knit out a ton of this and then just cut it to the sizes that you need. And that's what I've done here. Pretty sure I have enough to make both of the feet. I'm only going to do two because, right, turkeys only have two legs. So I'm just going to put them on the front of the chairs. Uh, so I did that with here 22 inches. Now we're going to cast on here uh, with our 22. And like I said, we are gonna do three and a half inches um, across is what we're looking for. Now, height wise, I'm just gonna eyeball it and I'm going about this big. That looks pretty good to me. So we'll go like four and a half inches, I think will be fine. Um, that's That's the plan. Okay. Um, I also am going to use waste yarn. And the reason for that is because I want the top of that sock to have a nice clean finish uh, because it's going to be sitting um, at the top of the sock and, you know, it's going to be really noticeable. And like I said, we're going to be doing panels uh, because I'm not using the whole thing. I don't actually even have to turn it to panel setting, but I do need to decide how many pins I want to use for this project. So uh, again, it can be a little too big because it's a sock. We don't want it to be too small. With this, just for comparison, when you have this, these are, there are six pins here and that's how we get that size. So we definitely wanna do more than six pins. I'm thinking maybe 10. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And then we wrap it around in a circle. Let's go with 10, that is the plan. So we're just gonna cast on and we're gonna use this waist yarn here. So there's behind one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here we are at ten. We're gonna pop that waist yarn in our feeder and go down. All right, and then we're gonna go back. And I'm just casting on with this waist yarn. Oops. 
Okay, now this waist is a little bit bigger because it's typically for the whole machine. Um, I'm also gonna use a ravel cord, right? Yes, because it's contrasting. Um, a ravel cord, if you are not familiar, um, if you've been here at any time, I really highly recommend using a ravel cord. Essentially, it's just um, one row of a contrasting color to your waist yarn and to your working yarn, and it allows you to quickly take off that waist yarn at the end um, when you're ready to cast off. So, we are just going to knit this into place and then start on the working yarn. Now, if you have questions on working with panels or using the Addy Egg, I have linked some videos down in the description for you um, to get you up and running. Oops, I didn't even tighten. I didn't even tighten my legs on. I jumped right into this project because I was so excited. There we go. Okay, so there's our ravel cord. And now we're going to go to our working yarn. And again, I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail so I can do a crochet finish to the top. And I wonder if I fold them in half. So I'm thinking too, so this is... This is how it works when I start these projects. Um, I didn't actually map this project out. Usually I will have my notepad um, sitting right here. Uh, this is the last project I did last minute a couple of days ago. Just I had to work out a lot of map, uh, map, a lot of math for this scarf I made. But I'm just winging this project because it's pretty straightforward. But um, what that does is it pauses my brain and makes me think, okay, well, instead of doing a single layer, maybe you should do a longer layer, fold it in half, and then and if we do that, it'll be a little bit thicker. I don't know. Okay, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, the great news: these are small pieces, so they are not going to take that long to make a sample. So we're going to start back with our working yarn. Okay, so there's one. Two. All right, well that is 18 rows and I'm gonna do two more rows. So we are at 20 rows. Now, as a reminder, what I mentioned at the beginning is I am going to be folding this in half like this and stitching it together on the sides to give us the little sock. Um, and then that's gonna leave the bottom open. If, if I cast off with a darning needle, I'll actually be able to cinch the bottom and create a sealed bottom. So that is what we are gonna do, my friends. So we did 20 rows here. We are going to leave a little bit of a tail. She will leave quite a bit of a tail. But again, I'm not gonna cast off with a waist yarn so I can cinch this together. do this okay so now we have that yarn tail there we're gonna cinch that together and then we're gonna stitch up the side using the same yarn tail yep that'll work and then once we do that we'll be able to stitch on our little feet so this look at this project y'all this is such an easy and amazing project um, I am gonna stretch that a little and I do want to make sure I think I should have counted just to remind or to make sure I was on 10 stitches but Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, ten stitches. Important. So we're gonna tighten that up there and we're going to go to that first stitch. Oops. Make sure your waist yarn is not in there. 
and I'm actually going to, oh, hopefully I didn't go back through the same hole. There we go. I'm going to give it a little tug and then I'm going to knot it on the inside. Just make it a little bit more secure. Okay, so now we're just going to stitch up the sides and you can do this with a mattress stitch. You can just go um, back and forth. This is going to probably be at the back of the leg, so it will not be a big deal. Um, but what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to take a pause and I'm going to knit the other one up um, and that way I can move this out of the way and then I'll show you how I will mattress stitch the side. All right, so now we have our two identical pieces um, and it just so happened that the waist yarn was identical. That was not intentional. So we are going to, um, before we mattress stitch up the side, I do actually want to crochet finish the top and hopefully I have enough yarn. I realized that I made that yarn tail pretty short, um, which... I, could do it. I think I have enough. It might be barely enough. Um, kind of a rule of thumb is when you're crocheting, um, always have at least two times the yarn tail. So if I just lay this out normally, I have this much and then I have, I mean, I have a little over two, but then I still have to tie it off and hide it. So a couple things we could do. We could add yarn to the end of this and complete that row. This is also very long, so what I could do, my original plan, is I could mattress stitch up the side and then use that yarn tail to pick up those loops, which makes the most sense. So that is what we are going to do here. So we're just going to fold it in half and get everything aligned. If it's easier for you, you certainly can grab a stitch marker or two and just mark your stitches just so that they align perfectly. Um, like this loop and that loop right there should align and everything should be essentially stitch for stitch. That's what we're looking for in here. Um, I'm just gonna eyeball it since this is just a last minute project. So just pick up your stitches on both sides, kind of weaving it in and out, just whatever works best for you. And see, we have that closed off bottom down there. Let me give that a little tug and it'll just be sealing up just like that. So just stitch this back and forth again, whichever method uh, you prefer. Okay, so let's just double check. This is gonna have as much stretch as we want for the little legs. And again, you can adjust this size depending on your legs. Um, in fact, I, I mean, our, my legs are really skinny on my chair, so I think this will be fine, but I actually, um, if I'm gonna do this again, which I probably will do a live for this, um, I would probably do, probably do 12. So now that I have this, I'm actually going to use this yarn tail to pick up these loops. So what I'm going to do just to make sure that I have enough stretch here on the top is I'm going to, I'm actually going to extend the crochets. I think I'm going to do yarn over do a single crochet and then do a chain one. Yarn over, single crochet, chain one. Okay, and then I can just pull that through. Okay, so now we have, a, it's much looser. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, we have this little ravel cord. So we're just gonna grab the white yarn and tug on one side to remove it, tug on the other side to remove it, and then your waist yarn falls right off. Okay, so here's our little sock for the chair. I'm gonna tie these two, I'm gonna weave the th this through, I'll probably tie those off. Um, so you can see doing that single crochet actually made it a lot looser. So I'm throughout here, you can see there's little holes in there that will help it so that it'll stretch a lot more um, and then I'll be able to hide these on the um, inside here. All right so there's our first sock. We are going to go through the same process with this one and then we'll come back together and I'll show you how to add our little turkey feet. So now that both of our socks are done and I did actually take one of them upstairs and try it and they fit perfectly so th these are my um, these are the perfect size for my chairs and I just have standard chairs. So they're not, they're not fancy. They're just regular standard chairs. Um, so we need to add our little footsies here. 
Now, with or our toes. So with the toes, I will say I think that it's going to be a much better look to fill the inside. And you can fill the inside with a number of things. Um, I absolutely recommend finding things around your house. As crafters, we do contribute to the landfill on many occasions because um, with many of the crafts we have, we have waste. We have things left over. Like look at all these little yarn scraps here. I keep every one of them and I use them as much as I can, a lot of times as stuffing. For this, I don't know if this would work. If I had enough orange, I could use it as stuffing, but I do want it to be a, cons a consistent um, size across. I don't want to put little... Uh, you know, I just don't want it to be uneven. So what I'm going to do, you'll notice I have another piece of old I-cord here. This I-cord, this yarn was really thick and it kept getting jammed in the Addy egg. You'll see it actually has a lot of like mist stitches in here. Um, so it's not, it's not, it's not good quality. I wouldn't use this for anything, but I kept it because reduce, reuse, recycle, we're going to reuse this. What I think I'm going to do is I am gonna put it on the inside. So I will measure it and put it on the inside and that will give us kind of a double thickness. And I like that idea. Also what we could do, you know, if I didn't wanna get rid of that, you could make your I-cord longer, fold it in half, and then, uh, um, you know, just like you would do for a beanie, just turn it right side out and then you would have like a double layer toe. Also, <laughs> There's, again, there's so many things you can do. Um, pipe cleaners, you could just put pipe cleaners in here. On one of the projects, I actually used rope. In fact, let me show you. I'll show you this project I made a while back. So I made some French fries to go with a little um, cheeseburger I had made. And for these fries, I actually used some um, really thick, uh, what do you call this? Twine, is it twine? It's really thick uh, and I just put it in here so then that way um, it keeps its shape. You know, this yarn wasn't the best and it's very noticeable <laughs> um, here. But anyway, that's another option if you have that. So get creative. So now we need to figure out our measurements for our toes. And what I'm thinking, take my little measurement here. I think a two inch toe. So if we do three two inch toes, that should suffice. Um, and what we're gonna do, where are my other scissors? All right, we're gonna make it more than two inches because once you start unraveling the end, you'll actually lose a little bit. So again, don't be afraid. Like I said, you can reuse this. And if we don't have enough, we can make more. It's not a big deal. Um, let's go here. So we're going to start by cutting that off and then we're going to remove these little pieces here. Okay. So now to get to the size we want, so I'm going to hold this here. I want two inches. Okay. So two inches is going to be there. So now I'm just going to pull this end. So I'm almost there. Okay, so that's about two inches. Actually, let's make sure that it is. Yep, it's about two inches. And then we're gonna pick up those live loops. We're not gonna cinch it just yet, but we are gonna pick up all six loops. So one, two, three, four. Again, don't pull it tight. Five and six. Now, this is where you can add your stuffing, whatever you are going to add. Um, I will also say, before you get too far into this, before you seal it up, let's put this yarn tail on the inside. And I do want it to stay a point, so I really like that it's a point here. In fact, I may, I may actually just make this a knot, because I think that'll look fine as the toe, because, you know, turkey toes are a little irregular anyway. So there we go, we just added a little knot and now it gives it more of a triangular shape and we are going to put this yarn tail on the inside. And then I'm gonna give it a tug just to make sure that it gets that triangular shape. There we go. And we will just, we can use this as stuffing. Like I said, there's no point in cutting this off and adding waste, we'll just Sometimes it helps to use the back of a 
crochet hook or a pin. Just gonna stuff that down into the toe. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll find with just this little bit of stuffing, that's all we need. You never know. Okay, but see now it's doing that thing I didn't want it to do, which is kind of an uneven shape. And I wanted it to be pretty uniform. So I guess I'll just shape it around my fingers. There we go. Yeah, and I feel like that's enough stuffing and I can use some of this as well. I think that's, I think that's gonna be it. Wow, and that is a really long toe, but I do want it to be noticeable. Okay, we're gonna go, we'll add a little bit more, just, um, I'm gonna use yarn scraps. That's that's what we're gonna do. Um, but lots of options to choose from. So I always, always wanna make sure that I have those options available. And because I love the way that this knit together, I mean, this is pretty secure. You're not gonna be able to see those yarn scraps as long as you choose colors that are um, similar in nature. And in this case, we have you know, all of this leftover orange rust. That is pretty good to me. Awesome. All right, we're gonna make five more of these. So we have six and we're gonna leave this tail in here because what we'll end up doing is we're gonna have three of these toes and we're gonna stitch them all to the bottom here. So you don't wanna cut off that yarn tail yet. That's gonna come in handy. So I will make five more of these and I'll meet you back here and we will connect them to our little socks. Okay, so we've, I've already done this first one. So let me show you how we are going to attach these little feetsies. So first of all, I want to find the one with the longest tail. They're all pretty much about the same size. So what I ended up doing, I actually am just going to tie all of the little feet together. overhand knot. So we'll just do a double knot there. And then we're going to grab this one. And we'll just go through there just to get it to the other side. And tie those together. Don't worry, we'll go back and finesse them. This is just the initial step. Okay, so now we have all three of our little feet together, um, but we want them to sit flat. So what we're gonna do, use the yarn tails out of the way, there we go. Like I said, we're just gonna grab whichever one, they're not very long but they really don't need to be long, but I am going to kind of reinforce this side here. I actually put it through. Okay, so now that we have those just kind of tacked together with knots, now we're gonna find where that join was. You do wanna make sure that is in the back. I forgot to do that with this one, so you'll see that the join is just a little off center. It's kind of on the left instead of the back. So if you have that seam in the back, it'll just look a little bit better. And then just flatten it down with your finger like that. And the reason we're doing that is because we do want to make sure that when it, when the feet are on, they lay flat. Um, these I went a little low, so when you sit it on with the chair, they kind of stick up, which actually doesn't look that bad. So then to attach your toes, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick up, not at the very bottom, but we're going to pick up, okay, loop here. And then we're gonna go through this first toe and just pick up a couple of loops and then pull it taut. And then we'll do another, we'll pick up a couple additional stitches. Okay, come back through there and pull it taut. 
And what I found with this is, so I start to get low on yarn. So um, what I did, again, trying to not have any more waste. Now I'm just gonna do another double knot here. And let that yarn tail go. And just continue down the row. And this way I still have enough yarn. Um, of course you can absolutely, absolutely add yarn to this. All right, so this is how they are starting to take shape, just like this. And we're gonna go through, I think two more, or over here just to get it so that it lays a little bit flatter and then we will hide all of the tails and I'll show you what the finished project looks like. All right, so here are our little turkey feet. Let's go put them on the chair and see if our plan turned out the way we wanted it to. All right, so here is said chair, and here are the turkey feet. Oh uh, my gosh, these turned out so stinking adorable. All right, and another use could be socks for your knitting machine if you uh, don't have chairs that you can make little chair socks for. So that is it, everybody. Thank you so much. Hopefully you like this content. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We are on our way to 100K. We just broke 21K followers. Um, thank you all so much. I appreciate you. I love you. Because of you, I get to be crafty every single day. And uh, you have a lot of great feedback. So thank you so much, everybody. Until next time, see ya.